Hi, amigues. It's live on KEXP. I'm your host, Alvina Cabrera. Welcome again to another session. And uh, you can find us at 90.3 FM, Seattle, where the music matters, donde la música importa, and streaming worldwide at kexp.org and on our free mobile apps. All these sessions, all the content and the stories that we create are made possible by donation from people like you. So thank you so much for your support, como siempre. And I'm here at the live room. It's one of my favorite places in the world. And I know that maybe is one of your favorite places in the world. And I'm super excited to introduce one of our favorite guitar duos. They release an amazing album in 2022, El Bueno y el Malo. And we have the duo, Hermanos Gutierrez, here in Seattle, visiting the city, but also playing across the country. So, Esteban, Alejandro, bienvenidos, Hermanos Gutierrez. ¿Cómo están? Yeah, super bien, muchas gracias. Um, muy feliz de estar aquí. Um, un honor. Por favor. Y, y pues listos para tocar, presentar nuestro sonido. Bueno, estamos listos también. Entonces, if you are ready, we can start. Amigos y amigas, hermanos Gutiérrez, live on KEXP. <música> Thank you. 
Hermano Gutiérrez, live on KEXP.
Hermano Gutiérrez, live on KXP. Alejandro y Esteban Gutiérrez, hermano Gutiérrez, live on KXP. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Bravissimo. Hermano Gutierrez live on KEXP. And that was amazing. Thank you so, so much. Uh, here from uh, Seattle to the world. And I think that uh, Alejandro and Esteban are kicking off uh, their tour here in Seattle. Nuevamente, bienvenidos. Y muchísimas gracias. Qué lindo estuvo. No, gracias a usted. De verdad, un placer de estar aquí con mi hermano. Um, y sí, muy agradecido de estar aquí en Seattle otra vez. Hoy vamos a tocar en The Crocodile. Y Sí, super feliz. Yo quiero saber, because I know that um, El Bueno y El Malo, your latest album, was our soundtrack for many of us here at KXP. So I want to know who is El Bueno and who is El Malo here. O sea, confess. Necesito esa confesión. <laughs> it always depends on the day. Uh, sometimes I'm the bad one. Sometimes it's my brother. Um, I think the concept of this record was really about um, an homage for Sergio Leone and Ennio Morricone and it was just fun to make it and it happened in my brother's basement and uh, he hit a note and it instantly took us to that scenery of Ennio Morricone so yeah it was really a decision of five minutes to come up with this name and we like it. It's beautiful and one of the most beautiful things that I read uh, about uh, how you was describing like playing together like a kind of a road trip and I would like if you can describe that road trip or explore a little bit more that idea um yeah we're doing music since like seven years now six seven years and it was always like uh, a journey that we're taking when we start to play the guitar like you're instantly in a in a in a beautiful landscape i see us ourselves always like in a desert um scenery and yeah i mean then we got like the feedback from the fans that we can transport them to their own um, journey, which is beautiful, which we were never aware of. And so being able to take the fans with us on our journey is, is just beautiful. And we're so grateful for that. Yeah. Y la verdad que you mentioned the desert. Bueno, mm -hmm. eh, I was born in the desert in Argentina. Ah. Y es increíble como me transportan a mi propio hogar. Mm -hmm. eh, so muchísimas gracias por, por eso. And, um, I would like to, to ask you about your musical background, but let's say your personal songbooks. Porque crecer con eh, madre ecuatoriana, padre suizo, mm -hmm. of course, that is a mix of music, culture, and a lot of things. And I would like to, to know more about your experience, like growing up eh, with that mix. So, yeah, growing up for me was, I was growing up with my brother's um, guitar experience that he had. He was the one who was like setting the tone at home because he was playing the classic guitar and he played the uh, milongas de Argentina. No me diga, que lindo. And um, I remember he made our mom cry all the time because she, she loves to be in that nostalgic mood. And so I think it was my brother who inspired me musically a lot 
And of course, then traveling to our childhood, to Ecuador was always very inspiring. You hold, you can hear this, the Ecuadorian salsa rhythms, just like this different kind of, you know, mm -hmm. and it was just always very inspiring. And then from then on, I was always kind of into film music scores, Alejandro Inarito, the Mexican director. And um, right now I'm really into cumbia from the 60s, uh, really like from the Amazon. I think it's amazing what they were doing back then. So visionary. So yeah, that is my background a little bit. Yeah, y yo comencé a tocar la guitarra a los 10 años y comencé con la the classic guitar y como ya dijo mi hermano, la música de Argentina, la milonga me encantó. And that w I played all the time just the classical milongas and you can still hear it in my finger picking style. And and then a big influence for me was my grandfather, our grandfather from Ecuador and um he showed me um Julio Jaramillo like los boleros de, de los años 50. And I can remember how he uh, he was listening to this, the, these songs. He, his, his favorite song was uh, Nuestro Juramento. Do you know the song? I, mm -hmm. I so, sí, 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 and so he was listening to that song and he started to cry because he got so touched by the song. And that was like my first, yeah, the first moment that I saw that music can touch you like in a nice way. You get sad, but also it's beautiful, you know. And then mm -hmm. when we started to play, we always wanted to touch or for de, de tocar de nuestra de nuestro alma, no? Mm -hmm. And that's why we also try now to play and give everything and 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 yeah, it's como que con los fans podemos conectar y siempre tocamos los los almas de ellos, o sea, es muy lindo. I, I like that you are like talking about the psicoelia from the 50s, mm -hmm. from the 60s. So we can we can see that person there. Y me gustaría saber como qué elementos de esa psicoelia es lo que los cautivan, los que los seducen. Wow, buena pregunta. Ah, gracias. Pues, um, <laughs> creo que no somos dos personajes que se sienten ahí en la mesa y, y analizamos mucho el sonido de otras bandas. Creo que lo que queremos transmitir es algo muy original, auténtico, que nos transporta. Mm -hmm. I heard this great sentence from a podcast uh, with Pharrell and Mark Rubin, and he said, chords are coordinates. And that's, I think, a very powerful, you know, to think about that because yeah you hit a note and it, it transports you to a very specific place and very individual so i think we just uh yeah it's very powerful and if we're able to do that as brothers then yeah we're happy hermoso y uh, como los está tratando la ruta the road uh, are you kicking off the tour here in seattle is that correct o sea, nosotros llegamos ayer y yeah today is like this is the first First show and tonight we're gonna have the first uh, show here in the, the Crocodile and uh, we're so, yeah, speechless that uh, almost all shows are sold out and uh, it's just beautiful to to feel the the love that we get from the fans here in the states and also worldwide. It's just it's uh, yeah. Sometimes we don't find the words. Y es una emoción muy grande que sentimos aquí. Bueno, eh, el álbum, el bueno y el malo, realmente impactó muchísimo. Mm. No sé cómo se sienten eh, con ese impacto que ha tenido. Like, now, what, what are your conclusions, like, one year after the release of that album? Sí, creo que recién nos estamos dando cuenta de lo que creamos junto con Dan Auerbach. Recuerdo que cuando sabíamos que íbamos a viajar a, a Nashville fue el, en marzo del 2022. O sea, nosotros teníamos las canciones ya preparadas y todo, pero fue una experiencia muy nueva, ¿no? De, de trabajar con un produ productor de ese nivel. And we have the biggest respect for Dan and what he um, he could hear what we wanted to create with him together. So he never wanted to change like the essence of Hermanos Gutierrez but he wanted it to level it up, como que subirlo a otro nivel. And he was the perfect uh, man for that job. He's, we have the biggest respect and we became friends and, and it's just beautiful what um, we could create with him and his team. And so we're very grateful for that, to, to be a part of the Easy Eye Sound family. 
beautiful, beautiful album. And congratulations again. Thank you so much for, for being here. Y para cerrar, la verdad, algunos planes, planes a futuro. Are you composing new music? Are you having like some plans after this US tour? So yeah, we just uh, did a new record uh, again in Nashville with Dan Auerbach and it's going to come out next year. And we're so excited to like continue this journey with him. And uh, it's always about telling a new story. And I think this time it was exciting because we felt like we're in a different point than we were like seven years ago. And it just makes something to you be around and travel around. And I think, yeah, we're very excited for the new record. And yeah, hopefully we can come back here and play it. Por favor, no podemos esperar. So again, thank you so much. Thanks for this amazing session and thanks for being here. We love when the bands are kicking off the tours here in Seattle. So please keep doing that. Eh, sigan haciéndolo. Y nuevamente, muchísimas gracias. No, gracias a ti, Amina. Thank you for having us. Please. Hermanos Gutiérrez, live on KEXP. That was amazing. Thank you so much for being part of KEXP. And um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. KEXP, and you can enjoy all the live on KEXP sessions that we have for you every day. And uh, these sessions are made possible by a donation from people like you. So please go to kexp.org live and make your donation now. My name is Alina Cabrera, y nos vemos la próxima. Hasta luego. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.